What is going on, Bulls Nation? We lost again last night, but we have to talk about Nikola Vucevic and what the Bulls plan on him moving forward. Resign him, trade him, release him, let him walk away. We're going to talk about that right after this. Let's talk about one of the most iconic basketball teams in the world. You're listening to Chicago Bulls Nation. All right, Bulls Nation. So the curious case of Nikola Vucevic. So the guy, let me let me start off by saying Nikola is not the sole problem for the Chicago Bulls. He is a part of the problem. However, he's not a bad player. Let me say that right off the bat. He's a very talented scorer with some deficiencies on it. I just feel like he just doesn't fit this Bulls team. Um, and let me say it by... And if he's in another team where it's more defensive oriented, he they could mask his deficiencies on defense and rebounding. He gets rebounds, right? Like it, at the end of the game, you'll see the box score. You'll be like, hey, he has 12 rebounds. But it feels like if you watch the Bulls in 2010, you know, and onwards, his rebounds is more like Carlos Boozer's rebound, you know, kind of like it's there. It just you know, because you're a big guy and you're in the center. It just drops in your lap. It doesn't feel impactful where if you need a rebound, you can count on him, right? Y you know what I mean? Like, they're getting offensive rebounds here and there, and then Vucevic would come out with 12 all of a sudden. But you know you got out-rebounded, and it feels like the defense is tailored around him. The reason why we're giving up so many threes back then, you know, like I would say in the first 15 games of the season, is because we're trying to help him from the inside. Uh, we're getting beat off the dribble because we are focused on stopping the penetration and, and the paint production. With that being said, we gave up a bunch of threes. They kind of remediate that, but something has to give, right? Like if you're not, if we are guarding the three point area now, that means we're not in the paint. That means offensive rebounds for the other team. Why? Because again, Nicola is, is a different kind of center. He's more of a finesse guy and he doesn't really, you know, command that presence in the middle with that being said it's it's tough the bulls are in a tough position especially the front office because what are they going to do with vucevic are gonna are they gonna let him walk away because he's an unrestricted free agent this summer are they gonna trade him who's gonna trade for him he's his value is at an all-time low he's a 32 year old center heading to 33 uh you know an aging guy who doesn't really defend that much and and you look around the league there's there's so many teams that could use especially you know contending teams that could use Nicola right now um, or they could use Nicola but what are they willing to give up package wise um, and then trade him you know like that's one thing is you trade him for what you know again that all depends on you know the other team willing to take on Nicola's he is an expiring contract, so if somebody's going to try to offload a bad contract, then, you know, what kind of assets are you going to bring back? So let's let's start off by saying let him walk away, right? Like, if you let him walk away, it's kind of like the front office admitting defeat. And it just doesn't, it, they just don't strike me as such, right? In, in my opinion, you know, because they gave up two first rounders and a young talent in Wendell Carter for Nicola. I don't know if they're going to go that route. Just let him walk away. Um, you know, I don't know. It, it seems unlikely with this front office. The second option is resign him, right? Resign him to a team friendly deal. That's not out of the window. What, but the question is define team friendly. His contract right now is very team friendly. He's only making 22 million compared to the other centers in his you know in his realm i mean look at the rudy gobert you know he's the exact polar opposite of nicola because the guy has no offense whatsoever he's getting the super max although he does have the hardware of being you know defensive player of the year i don't know if i want to pay rudy gobert that much um so signing him i would say that's not out of the window it, 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 to be quite honest with you uh what are the other options you do have a bunch uh but we're going to talk about that later and then the last one, trade him. That is the most, I would say, viable option. Uh, but there's a caveat for that. Uh, if you trade him, there's only a handful of teams that I can see that's going to willing to get his services. 
um, and mostly are contending teams. So now if you look around the league, who could use a center? Uh, not a whole lot, to be quite honest with you. And again, no team in the lottery would want Vucevic right now. Why would they want a good center that's, uh, that's just going to hamper their ability to tank? Uh, you look around the league and the, the most logical is maybe, maybe, and it's this is this is just a maybe, Golden State with their phonetic face and you put him not next to Draymond Green, that would hide his deficiencies on rebounding and defense because Draymond can, you know, pretty much hold the paint on his own rebounding wise and all that stuff. Uh, but with that being said, would Golden State really use his services though? Would they have, you know, they have Kevon Looney, which is really good. Uh, maybe they can compliment him with, with Vucevic, I don't know, and then let him walk away at the end of the season. Uh, salary dump, you know, if if they are completely just, I don't know, gave, gave if they gave up on James Weiss, Weissman, that is a possibility. Weissman and some other salary dump out there. Uh, the other team that I can think of is perhaps Portland, but it doesn't make for, sense for the Bulls because, you know, I, who are you going to get? Nurkic? Do you really want Nurkic if you're the Bulls? You're not going to get a whole lot of, you know, assets for Vucevic right now. You're lucky if you get a first rounder for him. If you could, you know, take that and recoup the loss, right? Like you already traded two first rounders. What are you going to do, right? If you could get one, but I just don't see any teams giving young assets or a rota even like a good rotational player for Vucevic right now. Maybe you can see, uh, you know, swing a deal with Phoenix and get Jay Crowder and, and you know, maybe a pick uh, that's going to be in the low first. Uh, you know, that's the most you can ask for, I suppose, with that with that kind of deal and let him, you know, play behind Aiton, you know, if they want to be some something like offensive minded. Uh, but other than those teams, I just really can't see any team. So trading him is almost dangerous because i as a bulls fan i don't want to acquire long-term assets as well because i want to hit the reset button if things doesn't work out in a couple of years now if you let him walk away just walk away for nothing right like I, I honestly don't think you can trade him for anything right now you're just gonna get bad salary and that bad salary is gonna cap you unless you're gonna get a first rounder with that bad salary but here's the reason why i would just let him walk away Next year, there's two centers that could potentially help the Bulls, you know, get this quote unquote rebuild. The first one would be Jakob Pertl. He's 27 years old, same timeline as Zach. Uh, you know, if you really want to build around Zach, so same time timeline as Zach. He's only making nine million right now. I think a fair deal for him would be 20 million. It's not gonna, you know, strong arm your cap. Uh, you might do. You might. You might want to give him, you know, a higher one. That would fit in the salary cap. You let Vooch walk away. You have 16 million, you know, in the cap space because I think 34 is the floor line next next year. But you don't you you tell DJ and and um, uh, Andre Drummond to not pick up their option, then give him because now you can you can exceed that cap, right? So, but you're still under uh, you're still under the tax uh, tax threshold. So we know the Bulls are cheap. So you get Pirtle or. Because it doesn't make sense for San Antonio to give him a big contract. San Antonio is rebuilding. They want to tank. Uh, you know, they, they want asset for Pirtle right now. If we trade Vooch for Pirtle, we need to attach a first rounder, most likely. And why would you do that if you could just right off the bat sign Pirtle next year, let Vooch walk away, save that, that first rounder. Uh, and this is a lost season anyway, so why give up another asset? So let him, you know, sign Pirtle. Or if they re-sign him, you know, take a look at Miles Turner. Maybe you can get him a defensive center. Uh, maybe do a, a, a two and one, you know, like a two guaranteed and, and one team option, you know, that kind of deal. So if things doesn't work out, you can reset, hit the reset button after two years, you know. So we'll see. I don't know. I just don't see the Bulls, um, you know, tanking all the way. They built this team, they hired that front office to get into the playoffs. So getting those two guys would get you a little bit closer, maybe would fill in the gaps defensively uh, and rebounding. Uh, just cut the losses with Vooch. Let him walk away. If you can't trade him this year, the first option would be trade for expiring contracts and maybe a first. If you can't do that, just let him walk away. Don't pick up long-term contracts because that would hinder you in signing Pirtle and or 
uh, Turner in the long run. But let me know in the comments how you feel about this, you know, proposition. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.